This video is sponsored by Squarespace. Hang about to the end of the video to find out more. So just over a month ago, things were a little hectic on this corner of the internet as there were seemingly movie trailers and teasers being released everywhere in a wave all at once. And with me trying to be the trailer coverage kind of guy, I got a little overwhelmed. And though I'm sure many of those trailers are now regretting their release date announcements amidst all of this, one of those trailers that slipped through the cracks back then was Sony Pictures' latest animation project, Connected. Now the actual title of this film slipped my mind as I started the script because it really wasn't that outstanding, but the actual content within the trailer was something I couldn't forget. And that's simply because it just comes off as such a beautiful mess, chaotically mashing together several traits that make it seem like both a doomed trash pile of content, along with even more sources of what seems to be some cinematic greatness. I have no idea if this film is amazing or disastrous. You might not remember it as Connected, or The Mitchells vs The Machines as it was originally called, but as the one with the pug in it. You get what they're trying to do here. Illumination Studios has mastered the art of broad audience spectacle, and this is Sony's marketing nudges towards the perfect middle-aged mum bait. Everyone likes dogs, especially the goofy ones. Now, Connected follows the conflict between Rick Mitchell and his daughter, Katie. When she was young, the family would often go out on nature hikes and enjoy each other's companionship, but now in the modern day, Katie is absolutely obsessed with her phone, not getting to truly experience life in front of her eyes. So in a last ditch effort to knock some sense into her, the dad sends Katie off to her dream college, not through a normal plane trip, but with one final road trip as a family. It's your classic boomer oldie shouting at clouds about how warp technology has become and how it's ruining the experiences of the younger generation who are all glued to their phones. Blah, 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 technology bad. Except it's not. At the same time, we're seeing elements of the other side of the argument, with the children and even the dad sometimes using technology for their own benefits, and finding a happy medium for the family to combine with. Clearly, as the hike continues, despite the diverging opinions and usage, the film is all about following the slow growth of a family as they begin to understand each other and become a more close-knit and connected family unit. Ah, oh, now that sounds pretty good. It's all about compromise and family. Except, it's not that either. No, this is all about a robot uprising instead, with Corporation Bigwig Pow revealing the Helperbots who immediately activate to enslave all of humankind. Now with their seeming advantage over the bots, they are tasked with saving the world as a family. It's an action thriller instead. Oh, and don't forget, uh, technology bad. The dad was right all along. That's the moral of the story. This really doesn't look too great. I'm all for plot twists, but what's a robot invasion doing in my sweet family trip movie? And beyond that, what is the messaging behind this film? To highlight technophobia and shoot down the kids who can't get off their damn phones? Or, or is it the reverse, at being jaded and off to what is reality in the world? Or being stuck in the past? Is it about monopolies? Is it about corporations? And though clearly with at least two entire generic film plots crammed together, this is set to be some kind of train wreck, the outer context of this film is actually looking pretty good. This project is being made by Sony Pictures Animation, so it's already a tad hit and miss. But the producers of this film are Lord and Miller, the direct reason we have such massive successes such as Cloudy with a Chance of Meatballs, The Lego Movie, and Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse. These guys know how to make good films. And on top of that, this film is being co-directed by former writers of Gravity Falls, more top-tier crew members. Looking at all of their track records, this film should come off as an absolute masterpiece. Which only makes things more confusing as there's clearly so many elements that can go wrong so upfront in the project, and there's so many weird decisions slid into this film. But before we dive properly into that, we're gonna attempt to piece the entire film together through this trailer alone in chronological order. Actually, there's a second edit of this trailer release for the UK, and that gives us a couple more extracts of footage to use, so we'll be bouncing over that too. If you haven't already though, feel free to subscribe during these trying times. And don't forget, only you can help the fight against my burgeoning unsub viewer ratio.
So we start off with the dad, Rick Mitchell, solemnly watching back old memories of the good old days using his old video camera, presumably down in the basement he calls his happy place. There we see that when Katie Mitchell was young, she was a far more desirable daughter, having a clear connection with her father and happy to take in life with her own eyes. Cut ahead to today and Katie is a completely different person. She's still a quirky little lass, but she pumps all of her passion into technology aiming high with her dream course in film all the way in California. It's kind of hard to pinpoint exactly when events take place, as across all of these days, every character wears the exact same outfits, even before the road trip starts. But hey, can't shoot down Katie, always wearing that pride pin. Now Katie's a bit of a creative, creating all sorts of artwork, patch stickers, and puppetry videos with that video camera. Think towards the end, her dad will re-watch this clip on the camera and eventually see the magic that she can create with technology. Hmm. With this being the final day with the family, Katie decides to create them all a goodbye video to show at the dinner table. Though Rick's adamant rules to enforce some real family time cuts into the moment as the rest of the family clearly struggle to connect without their screens to look at. And though Katie has something good to show, her dad just cannot get to the end of it without creating some kind of conflict. We can also see the actual video is the whole family represented as her sock puppets from before. Maybe the dad didn't like looking like the grumpy one. Also, their colours all represent the colours of the clothes they wear for most of the movie, with Katie's puppet thinking about rainbows and vomiting it out too. You think this is too much analysis to think this is insinuating something in the background? Hmm. Before the video reaches its end, the dad demands no screens at the table, so Katie tries to take it away against the wishes of a now regretful father. The conflict of course breaks the laptop and sets off more of the conflict of the film, though I will say for a moment, this writing moment as it's edited in the trailer here? isn't too hot. The adamant screen rule when someone's showing you something seems awfully forced, especially with it being a special occasion, and the trope of fighting over something till it breaks is just a cliche and uninspired. But it does cause this strong, vile line. I love it. This is exactly why I'm excited to leave tomorrow. Katie. Also, didn't this scene start off in the day with the lights off? Why did that suddenly change later? Is it a breakfast scene followed by a day of everyone doing their normal things and then a day of, hey, look what I made and fight over something? Time. Or is this just a trailer inconsistency? With Katie upset, the UK trailer actually reveals a hint more content with this one line from the father as the dad wallows with his consequences. I gotta get that connection back. I know you can fix it. Way to keep it on the nose. Cutting to the next day, and though today is now plain day, the dad has hijacked the trip into a road trip instead as an attempt to make up to his daughter and bond with his family in one last attempt. The UK trailer also gives us a tad more of this scene with the mum telling us that the dad went rogue on the idea and the son thinking it might be fun. Mom, your father kind of went rogue on this. Aaron, you too? Could be cool to hang out. For hours in a car. Also, my god, why is the son's voice lower pitched than the dad? I can understand it as a gag if he rarely speaks and the deepness is part of the joke, but just having it here in passing makes it seem like someone miscast the two characters around. It's jarring and unnecessary. The film then, interestingly, gives us this shot, which gives me higher hopes for the directing, as it's a lot more creatively unique. With Katie being such a creative soul, it makes sense to give her Tracy Beaker-esque 2D expressions. I hope more of these kind of Spider-Verse effects come into fruition, as I really like these. So they drive, at the very least, from Michigan to California, just 36 hours and 2,400 miles to go. Yes, of course I googled that, I'm British, I don't know where Michigan is. And I doubt these billboards mean anything, but most of them may be suggesting the next scene that they go to, but if there's a secret there, I missed it. Here's Monchi the Pug doing more marketable things, eating flies as you do, you know how it is. And then here's Katie taking things into her own hands by vlogging some fun into the adventure. Fun fact, the UK trailer starts out with this and then choppily cuts up all of the dialogue in the trailer. It's disgraceful. Also, this joke? Dang it, Katie! Dang it, Katie! Sure, dang it, Katie! I'm not a fan. Well, I like the concept about it, but the actual catchphrase element of it feels forced. Maybe I'd like it more if it was realistically spread across the film instead of edited back to back. At one point, we get back to this original scene with them in a shop. Sorry, store. Again, this scene screams boomer humour with even the kitty filter being condescendingly arrogant, essentially saying that Gen Z and other younglings are completely tone deaf to their elders. Ugh, it just feels distasteful to me. 
As they continue food stop to food stop, eventually the trip is interrupted as the kids want to watch the new conference by PAL, some sort of Apple copycat and the host of Katie's old laptop. Almost as big a monopoly as the Sony Corporation in this film. They're revealing the new helper bot that they promise will never ever turn evil. First of all, helper bot? That's a bad name. They've literally got PAL on their chest. Also, this line? We promise you they will never ever turn evil. Poor delivery too, even the captions thought that they said either or ether or something. Anyway, the UK trailer shows us a whole lot more footage of the conference, with the robots immediately flying up, jamming the doors and announcing, Please remain calm while we capture you. With the robots activated, they all fly out of the PAL building and soon across the entire world. By the time they reach the family, it's still daytime of presumably the same day. Interestingly though, you'd assume them seeing the event live on their phones would jolt them into action, escaping by car or trying to hide somewhere safe or something, but by the time it reaches them, they're all just casually at another store. Maybe the dad forces them to close it before they see the climax of it all. Presumably, they now land all across the globe, from American streets, national landmarks, and even Tokyo, where we see a man being frozen and chucked into a hexagon seat. Basically, with the same tech as Syndrome's weapon. This is the main plan of the evil robots. Thanks UK trailer for pointing that out. Here's one landing at the same time of day with the same cloud, so I imagine this is actually near the family, as opposed to this one that's almost gone dark by now. The family is understandably shook. Thought I'd throw in some youngling lingo in there. The next most matching shot is then the family in this same building, releasing their breath from behind a counter. Perhaps here is where they first see a human being captured and manage to hide away from the searching robots. With these windows all clear and exposing, they make moves to eventually board it up and stay buckled here for the time being. Though actually, the UK trailer also shows us this same sunset scene with the dad attacking the robots mid-invasion, only to be flown way up high. Perhaps though not necessarily winning the fight, this allows the family to hide away as he too escapes in a freezer to win the fight, and then choosing to stay hidden amidst everything else, with a plan being formed somewhere along the line after being boarded up in the building based on this shadow which looks like a boarded piece of wood. Maybe the plan's an escape plan the next day, and as the dark settles in, here's Katie potentially on the roof or something watching the invasion in the skies, with all movements going upwards. Think it's all the hexagon seats being taken to their host? Whatever the case, at some point the plan falls through as two robots eventually crash through their barricades only to be confused by the existence of the pug. Dog, pig, dog, dog, pig, dog, dog, loaf of bread. This joke, I also am not the biggest fan of. It's not the worst, I like the pig dog bit, but probably would have preferred that bit milked a little longer. The loaf of bread makes me roll my eyes. Whatever the case, it causes them to short circuit like any good Deus Ex Machina plot device does. Or maybe it's just edited to look like that's what happened. And fun fact, these two robos actually become friendlies that help the family out. Actually, here they are behind Katie as she says, the Mitchells have always been here, that's what makes us great. I guess they're suggesting they know this place better than most? Or some family pep talk? It doesn't make a whole lot of sense to me. Anyway, every other scene basically has blue sky, so let's assume it's the next day. There's a toilet humor toilet break that next leads to this car chase. My guess is the family, now knowing that humans are being taken away, plan to tackle the problem by following the skies to the PAL factory to defeat the robots themselves somehow. Look, there's the two robots from before, though they've got a third one on their tail to get rid of. And finally, though this could have easily started earlier in the plotline, another element of this invasion becomes clear. The direct story synopsis tells us that all all electronic devices join in the tech uprising, assuming they're influenced by PAL's monopoly as well. Either through a PAL chip like this toaster, or a PAL router like in here. The UK trailer also shows us drones are in on it too. PAL's got a little bit of Amazon in them as well, especially with that logo. So if the family goes to the root of the problem with the PAL factory, then I imagine here is where they'd reach this scene. Surrounded by a mall-esque room of electronics, all equipped with PAL's influence. And hey, there's our robo buddies, now with fake faces plus it onto them. Neat. As I assume a big conflict begins, the family survives this attack and somewhere along the line even learn how to fight the robots as they earn the weapon of one of the robots themselves. In a sudden spike of activity, Katie and Rick are now miles up in the air. Just, just kind of run with it. That's the only footage we've got. 
Kitty uses the telekinetic technology to destroy those black drones in the sky, whilst Rick catches her on the back of one of the Robo Friends. And though this is the last of the footage, you can imagine with the powers to defeat the robots, they smash all they can and release all the humans from their cages. Perhaps that's even what the other two are doing at this point. What happens to Katie's college life? Is the message of technology hatred being okay? Is it about monopolies instead? And what is this symbol way off in the ground? Is it a hologram from the factory or just some weird lasery thing? or just distant robots in queues. Uh, that alone has stumped me, I can't tell what it is. Other than that, that's pretty much the entire plotline I can muster from this film. Why is almost the entire plotline in the trailer, you ask? Marketing! All the best trailers spoil 90% of their films, and you know that 50% of the screen time is otherwise just going to be spent on Monchi the Pug. There's also all sorts of other confusing factors to this film. Why is the editing so bad on the UK trailer with its splicing? How can mashing several tired plot pieces that we've seen before possibly work in a satisfactory way? And though we trust the people, this is director Mike Rianda's debuting role. Will that cause any issues as well? We also see one scene with that proper artsy flair, but everything else is just kind of missable. Hopefully that won't be too much of a waste of potential. I don't like it when it's small and unnoticeable. I want the bigger stuff as well. But on the flip side of things, so many things seem to be going right for this film. I don't hate this right off the bat. I'm just left a little conflicted, as seemingly always. That blinking joke at the table isn't actually too bad. And the final licking scene in the trailers? Pretty good. I like the naturalistic delivery of jokes that are supposed to be a real moment. Not some kooky whipped up catchphrase moment. <laughs> There's a lot going on in this movie. There's a lot of varying elements all cramming into one spot. Some big name creators and some low tier storytelling. Some intriguing artistic direction and some baffling voice casting. Generic and basic marketable shill and potentially a heartfelt familial adventure dug a little under the surface. I am excited for this film because I have no idea what my response to it will be as it seems like a yin yang of amazing and trashy. But that just makes me all the more intrigued to see where this film possibly ends up. Opening this trailer for the first time made me think it was Illumination's copycat with that big pug up front. But looking more into it, it's clear there's a more complex story being told. But what exactly that story is telling is something we'll just have to wait for another five months for. Wait, what? This movie's being delayed in the UK till October? Oh, well, screw that! I guess there's no review from me then. Boo to the distributors! Why you gotta shoot us down like that? Though, with the way things are going, I guess anyone getting to see this film in October is probably getting a bit of a miracle. For now though, let's just agree that seeing a movie in an actual cinema is really nice, whether it's September, October or any time of year. I'll be watching with eager but confused eyes The Mitchells vs The Machines or Connected, the moment I get a chance. And hey, have you ever had the urge to create your own website but haven't quite had the know-how to do it effectively by scratch? Well, that's where Squarespace comes in. Squarespace is there to help assist you create your own website in any way possible. They have endless templates with which you can use to edit easily through their easy to use engine, and they have all sorts of other features to help you along the way. From things like importing content from other social media accounts, to full on buying domains directly from inside Squarespace. No matter what you require, Squarespace is there to help you every step of the way to creating your own beautiful website. So go to squarespace.com and you can get a 10% discount right now just by using my link on screen now or at the top of the description. Squarespace.com slash DazReviews. Grasp the opportunity while it's still there. Otherwise, for now, my name's been Daz, you didn't really care, and I'll see you in a bit. <sighs> I guess now that I've got this downtime, I might spend more time digging into those old slash new trailers. I kind of want to cover more trailers as they come out kind of content. They're fun. They're a lot more... I like the speculation side of things. Let me know what you think. Maybe I'll work on the format. See ya.